Welcome to Taking Stock. I'm Amanda Lang. Coming up on the show, will affordability and supply measures make any difference for first-time home buyers? And was there something for everyone in the federal budget or nothing for anyone? Plus, a national dental plan sounds great, but so far it lacks teeth. That's all ahead. First for the week that was in business. It's time for the briefs. The federal government tabled a budget that holds the deficit at $40 billion while introducing $50 billion of new spending spread between housing, defense, health care and incentives to business. It's projecting that in five years time, the budget will still be running in the red to the tune of $20 billion. Inflation in Canada ticked higher in March to 2.9%, as prices at the pump rose 4.5% and shelter costs were up 6.5%. There were signs that price increases for food are moderating. Grocery store prices were up just 1.9% in March, but that of course is building on previous high levels of price increases that have yet to reverse. This year, what uh, the data have shown us is that each of the inflation releases for January, uh, February and March in Canada have come in below economists' expectations. So really great news. Costly housing has not stopped Canadians from feeling bullish about real estate. Nearly half, or 48%, think the value of homes in their neighborhood will increase in the next six months. Only 8% are expecting a decline. The remaining 44% wisely aren't sure. But since bullish sentiment can be self-fulfilling, it could spell good things for those looking to sell. There was better news for the global economy. The International Monetary Fund upgraded its outlook for growth this year, now looking at 3.2% growth worldwide. That's level with last year, but below the recent norms, closer to 4%. Higher interest rates in developed economies are acting as a drag on growth. One year after more than $20 million in gold was stolen from Pearson Airport, arrests have been made, including an employee at the airport. The thief made off with the gold and cash after offering a phony waybill to employees. Only a small portion of the gold has been recovered. The bust also included firearms charges after one of the men involved was found with 65 illegal weapons. A pipeline rupture in rural Alberta sparked a wildfire this week. TC Energy's natural gas pipeline in Yellowhead County was the cause of an explosion and subsequent fire. The company said the section of pipeline was isolated and shut down to limit leaks. No communities were threatened by the fire. And finally, productivity likely plummeted Friday after the release of Taylor Swift's newest album, The Tortured Poets Department, released at midnight Eastern on Thursday night. Swift has broken numerous industry records this year. Her latest album is expected to be no exception. And those are your business briefs. Buying a home can seem like a distant goal for young people. New measures might put that goal a little more in reach, but could also send prices higher. James Laird is CEO of RateHub.ca. James, thanks for being with us. Thanks for having me. And of course, there were a whole suite of new things introduced by this government in recent weeks and then kind of formalized in the budget. Uh, But when I say could send prices higher, because you make it easier to buy homes, things like extending amortization on mortgages, you actually increase that demand side of the equation. Are you worried about that? Will this actually worsen the problem in the short term? I mean, anything that helps uh, does hurt a little bit, Amanda. But what I was really happy to see is that the important initiatives were targeted at first-time home buyers. They're only eligible if you are a first-time home buyer. So that includes the increase to the savings plan to be able to withdraw more from your RSP, which is quite a powerful savings vehicle, as well as being able to amortize a new build over 30 years. It's only first time home buyers who will be able to do this. So while that will you know, inflate prices a little bit, it would be a lot more if, if these types of things were available to the broader market, not just young Canadians struggling to enter the market for the first time. It is a, a question that comes up quite a bit, James, because other countries, including the US, have those long term locked in amortizations. You can lock in at today's rate for a very long time. Any sense of whether Canada would ever go that way? Because I can understand that it would create some stability. Uh, it also, of course, means you don't own your home for a lot longer. You have less equity in your home. Maybe there, that's the downside. But the stability of it seems to make sense. Yeah, the U.S. has uh, 30-year terms, meaning the interest rate is guaranteed for 30 years, something quite a foreign concept in Canada where almost all of our mortgages are five-year terms. Now, in Canada, we do have seven and 10 year terms available, but 
they, they don't prove to be very popular. I think they're not, they're not marketed to Canadians very much. And you do pay a premium for getting that interest rate locked in for a longer period of time. So in Canada, most mortgages are either a five-year fixed or variable. Is it safe to say that puts the risk on the homeowner rather than on the bank? U.S. banks obviously are taking a, a gamble that they can afford that 30-year rate. I mean, certainly. So when your mortgage comes up for renewal, uh, there's really an equal chance that the rates are going to be higher or lower. Uh, you know, for the last 10 or 15 years, borrowers have been uh, pleased that their rates are usually lower than they were for the previous term. Mm -hmm. um, but there is risk. And in today's environment, we're seeing almost all Canadians, they have to renew from kind of the old world rates that were at record lows around 2% up to 5 and 6% like we're seeing now. So right now does highlight the risk that the borrower holds when you're only doing five years at a time. We did get a little sense of optimism from our central bank governor this week, James, talking about the path of rates. He feels, sounds to me as though he's ready to, to say that they've, they've won the fight on inflation or at least close to it. Uh, but you don't think rates will come shooting lower. They might start coming down soon, though. Yeah, it does seem like a rate cut is on the table for either the June or July Bank of Canada announcement. Now, the one thing I've been thinking about is we're only talking about the first cut. Mm -hmm. You know, rates are up almost 5% over a couple of years here. So just because we come down a quarter point, that doesn't, people shouldn't think that we're going to just automatically slide back to the record lows that we saw during the pandemic. It's likely right. we'll never get back there again. So I've been thinking about, okay, we cut a quarter point in the summer. But then what happens after that? It's, you know, a quarter point. Uh, we're still going to be at similar rates to where we are today. James, so good to have you. Really appreciate your time. Okay, thanks, Amanda. James Laird is co-CEO of RateHub.ca. Coming up, along with affordability issues, the federal budget took aim at some measures aimed at growing the economy. Is it enough? Stay with us.